John Lusk here of Lusk Archery Adventures, series testing, successful hunting. Well, I'm finally all set up and ready to start testing in my new house in Dallas. We live uh, just outside of, of the Dallas-Fort Worth area in Melissa, Texas. And I serve as a pastor for the DFW Church and lead the, uh, the East Worship Center. You can check us out online. But after a really challenging transition, man, we're finally getting things all set up and I finally got all my testing ready to go. And I've got about a dozen broadheads ready uh, to start testing. I've actually begun doing that testing. And I just wanna thank you all. Thank you for your patience this year. Usually by now, I've done, gosh, eight or 10 different broadhead tests and a few bow battles and stuff, but all of that got interrupted. Hopefully I'll get the bow battles in in, uh, in the months ahead. But uh, thank you for your patience with that. And thank you for your support over the years. On my channel right now, I have over 250 different broadhead test videos. Man, I couldn't believe that. Just last year alone, I added 80 to that. So there's a lot of different broadheads that I've tested and you can check them out on my channel. If you're ever wondering if I've tested ahead, just type in Lusk and then the name of the broadhead into the YouTube search bar. And if I've tested it, it will come up. And maybe I tested it in the past with an older procedure, um, but then you know maybe I've done a retest or maybe I will do a retest in the future. But that's a good way to know because a lot of times people ask me, did you test this one? Did you test that one? Sometimes I even forget. So you can just search it and check it out. But thank you for your support over all the years. I appreciate it. I appreciate all of you who subscribe, who make comments and give suggestions, give feedback. A lot of you have, uh, have donated broadheads to me. Thank you so much. That's really the bread and butter of the channel is people just being interested in a broadhead and seeing how it performs and they send me a pack and then I test them and they benefit and then the channel benefits and everybody watching benefits. So thank you for doing that. I hope you continue to do that. Some have donated cash as well, which I really appreciate. Man, these testing supplies really cost a lot of money and a lot of times I end up buying the broadheads as well. I just spent a few hundred dollars the other day ordering a bunch of new broadheads to start the testing with this year. So thank you for all your support like that. What I want to do as we start 2023 in the testing is go through how I'm going to do the testing procedure. And basically, I'm going to keep things the same as in 2022. So if you're familiar with what I did in 2022, I'm going to do it basically the same, but I have a little bit of a different setup here in, uh, in Texas. And I'm going to throw in some new things as well, but the same basic scoring system. Now, let me just start with a question here. Why why am I doing this testing? People ask me that all the time. What's the point? If you just hit an animal with a good shot with pretty much any broadhead, isn't it going to kill it? And you know, there is a good likelihood that, that that could be true. I'll tell you what, you take the worst broadhead on the market. And man, I've tested some really lame broadheads over the years. I try to be respectful to all of them, but man, there's some, uh, there's some losers out there. But I would not want to get shot with any of them. Okay, I would not want to get shot with any of them. So a good shot on pretty much any animal with pretty much any broadhead may be lethal. But that being said, all broadheads are not created equal. There's so much variation. There's variation in materials. There's variation in construction, in hardening, in geometries, in cutting diameters, in flight characteristics, in penetration, in durability, in sharpness, in edge retention, bevel design. There are so many different variations. It can get overwhelming. And you go to the store to buy them and there's like this wall, okay? Or you go on Amazon or your local bow shop and there's just a wall of broadheads and you're like, where do I start? And each of them have really great packaging and with celebrity endorsements saying, this is the best broadhead, this is the best broadhead. Then you ask your buddies and whichever one helped them get their biggest deer, they're gonna say, that's the best broadhead out there. Or whichever one they, they missed or didn't kill a deer with, they're like, that broadhead sucks, okay? So anecdotal evidence you know, only goes so far and it can be really confusing. So my channel attempts to cut through all the crap and just provide data. That's the whole point. I'm an engineer by education, civil engineer, work as a pastor now, but I like to use my engineering analysis to, to apply to the testing that I do. My goal is to do uniform, repeatable, consistent tests. With every broadhead I test, I do the same tests 
with the same mediums in the same way. So you have consistent results, consistent tests, and then you have data points that you can use for comparative analysis. If the tests were not repeatable, if they weren't consistent, like people say, why don't you shoot animal parts? Why don't you test them, you know, on real things like that? Well, those aren't uniform. They have to be uniform uh, mediums and uniform repeatable tests under the same conditions in order to have comparative results like that, comparative data points. So that's what my channel attempts to do. And what I'm doing is I'm testing in the five most important areas when it comes to a broadhead. I'm testing and, and really the first one isn't really a test so much as a measurement, but the cut size, the flight characteristics, the, uh, the penetration, the sharpness, the edge retention, and the durability. Those are the main areas that I test. And so what I want to do here now at the start of the year is go through and explain a little bit about each of the tests that I do and why I do them. And then I don't have to go through it each and every week when I, when I put out a new video. You can come back to this one if you have any questions or people and your friends ask questions, why does he shoot it through steel or something? You can come back and watch this video, okay? First, the cut size. So that's pretty much advertised though. Sometimes it's, it's advertised falsely on the package. And so, you know, I'll use my own uh, micrometer here and I like to measure the, the cutting diameter as well as the total cut. That is that broadhead passes through an animal, passes through a medium, what kind of a cut are you getting there? That accounts for 20% of the score. And then flight characteristics. And really what I'm going after here is flight forgiveness. The way I do the test is really simple. I've done it a lot of different ways over the years, but I found probably the most useful one is I shoot uh, a broadhead and I shoot a field point. And first the field point and then the broadhead. And, and then I just, I try to see how closely do they match up. And I do it a bunch of times, but I usually just show one of those uh, on the video. And, and you know, this is within my margin of error, okay? I'm not using a, a, a hooter shooter or anything. I'm just standing up there and shooting and I get a feel of wh which heads are more forgiving and I give them a score based on that. So flight forgiveness counts for 20% of the score. Then penetration. For penetration, what I do is I have a few different tests that I do. Penetration test one, I have this, this layered medium. First, it's a two one-third inches of rubber foam mat sandwiched around a half inch of MDF, medium density fiber board, because it's consistent. And then that's backed up by this Clear Ballistics. Clear Ballistics is the company that makes this FBI grade gel. It's really cool because you can reuse it over and over, but it's really expensive, okay? But it's great stuff, it's worth looking into. So that's one penetration test, just to see that penetration. It kind of simulates hide, bone, and tissue with the gel there. That's penetration test one. Then penetration test two, I have layered cardboard, and I just buy the, the unopened, put together boxes, two big stacks, and I compress them together with F clamps there so they're held together in a consistent way. And then I see how many layers the broadhead penetrates through. And then the third part of the, uh, the penetration test is an angled shot. And I just at, a, at like a 45 degree angle, I shoot into this, uh, this just a quarter inch of MDF and carpet, kind of like hide, and just see how the broadhead does. Really, I don't really even like this test, to be honest, but people ask for it, so I keep doing it because almost every head does fine with it. But that's uh, the third part of the penetration test, okay? Then sharpness and edge retention. What I do is I take a broadhead straight out of the package and I test the initial sharpness using this edge on up sharpness tester. Okay, it's designed for knives, but it works great with broadheads as well. And the way it works is it's a scale and it has this, uh, this, this scale that measures the pressure that it takes with a broadhead. So you've got a, a broadhead here. To, to press down, to break through this copolymer wire. Okay, it's a highly regulated 
uh, copolymer wire, and the pressure it takes to cut through that is weighed in grams. Okay, then that's correlated to a score, and you can read about that in the description. Like, like uh, if it, if it gets a score of 250, I think 250 is like a razor blade, you know, like that. I list it all in the description below every video, so you can correlate how many grams of pressure, like a, a butter knife would be, or a steak knife, cutlery knife or a razor blade, stuff like that, and I give them a score accordingly. That's the sharpness. And I also test edge retention. And the edge retention is after penetration test one that goes through this layer and the, uh, and the gel. Then I test the sharpness again using the same edge on up sharpness tester, and I see how much sharpness it's lost. Okay, so it gets a score for that. How much has the sharpness dissipated or decreased after that first shot there? And then I have another part, just a small part of the sharpness testing, the ease to resharping. A little bit subjective, but how easy is it to resharpen? So that sharpness, edge retention, resharpening, that accounts for 20% of the score. And then the next thing I test for is for durability. And durability is uh, super important, right? Because you want a broadhead that's gonna hold together. So I have a few different tests that I use for durability. First, I shoot the broadhead through a half inch layer of MDF, one broadhead through three times through the half inch layer of MDF and see how it holds up. If it's still doing well, and this is kind of a knockout round, if it hasn't bent or been really disfigured or broken, then I shoot it two times through 22 gauge steel plate. If it's still going strong and it's held together through that, then I break out ugh, the big gun of this concrete cinder block, okay? And I shoot it into that. That's always fun to do. And I'm glad I use a Bishop Fad Eliminators, okay? Because they can take a licking, okay? And shoot into that cinder block. And, and, and that's just a good final test. If they've made it through the MDF, they've made it through the steel plate, let's just test the overall structural integrity of this broadhead. Now, it's not necessary, right, if to go deer hunting, to have a broadhead that goes through steel plate and goes through concrete, but it does test the outer limits of what a broadhead can handle. And it does make a difference. I've had broadheads do really well on concrete, but then a certain angle they hit on a femur of a hog or something bends them terribly. Sometimes even just an animal, it, especially at different angles, is way more challenging and, 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 and damaging to a broadhead even than these tests that I do. So while we don't hunt armor-plated animals, sometimes truly the animals we hunt do more damage than even these tests do. So there is value to it, but more than anything, it's just gonna give you comparative data points. So then you can look at all these different areas. You can look at the, the cut size, you can look at the flight forgiveness, you can look at the sharpness, the edge retention, the penetration, the durability, and you decide which of those data points are important for you with your setup your style of hunting and the animal that you're pursuing. And then what I do is I've created an algorithm that kind of puts all of those together. It's really complicated, okay? I explain it a bit in the description below every video, but, and I give the scores for each of the tests and show how it works, but it's basically showing how well a head would do against like a deer size animal, okay? It could be a muley, it could be a white tail, but basically that size animal, okay? Because one broadhead may be better for bigger animals like that, but this is just with the average setup, average size animal that we're hunting, it gives you a score based on a 100 point scale, 20 points in each of those five areas, zero to 100. And so it's a good way to just kind of summarize and look at, based on real data, how effective, how lethal is this broadhead gonna be in the field, okay? That's how the, the testing works. And then I give a corresponding, easier to follow uh, grade of golden arrows, okay? My golden arrow score, zero to 10 golden arrows. So if a head did the best any broadhead could do or has ever done in flight and was as sharp as any broadhead has ever been, held its edge and was easy to resharpen and 
and flew really well and had you know maximum cut size and you know and penetrated as good as any broadhead has done and was as durable as any broadhead then it would get a perfect score but everything in broadhead design is a trade-off so nothing has got a perfect score some have gotten 10 golden arrows because if you get nine 90 percent or higher 90 points or higher then you get 10 golden arrows but none have ever gotten a hundred point score there's no perfect broadhead out there and then what I try to do with the heads that do really well in my testing, I put them in my quiver and I try to kill as many animals as I can every year. I love the meat and I love to hunt and I love to test the broadheads. And moving to Texas, I'm hoping that I'm going to do a lot of testing on hogs too. So I also have a lot of bow hunting videos and I try to use as many different broadheads as I can in the field to see how these, these heads perform. And with every head that I've tested that's done well in my lab here, it's always done really well in the field, okay? No broadhead is perfect, but the testing really does translate into real world experience, okay? So I hope it's helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to ask them. Oh, I get this question a lot and I wanna clarify it here. I no longer do a bag drainage test or a, a jug, a canister drainage test. A lot of people recommend that. And I've, I've tried in the past, a few years ago, I went after that because I love the idea of a test. You shoot a broadhead through a container with like colored water and see how long it takes to drain to a certain level, you know, maybe that's going to show the bloodletting ability. But what I found is those tests are completely inconsistent. I tried using like plastic jugs, milk jugs, cardboard jugs, and whether that flap folds in or out, it just makes a huge difference and it's just not repeatable. So then I went on to use Ziploc bags and, but then the bags were tearing. So then I found the thickest Ziploc bags that I could or special order anywhere. They're really expensive. And, and I shot these, I filled them up to a certain, you know, measured a line, shot them in the exact same place with the same broadhead and got completely different results from one shot to the next. I even had huge heads drain the bag much more slowly than very small heads. It's just completely inconsistent. So just my personal opinion from my empirical data, those drainage tests really aren't worth the, the fluid in the bags, okay, or in the container, but they are fun to watch, but I don't use those in my testing just because they're not consistent. And without consistency, you can't have real comparative data points. And that's the foundation of true scientific testing. So I hope that helps. I hope that makes sense. And I look forward to putting out my first test video coming up really soon. And I do want to add this, that for the testing that I'm doing this year, I'm going to be using my Bowtech CP28 set at 72 pounds, 27 inch draw. I'm using Bishop FOC King Arrows for most of the shots, but Bishop Fad Eliminators for the really hard impact ones. So stay tuned, more broadhead tests coming up soon. <laughs>